Neil's been really active and, he, and he's ordered in a special piece of CO2 for us, which he's going to get out of the box now. So we're going to cut the CO2 in half. So here, Neil's cutting the, the CO2 now with a saw. And this is the typical saw that you might find in a hardware shop or a, a do-it-yourself shop. So um, what we're going to do today is we're going to use this as a reaction vessel and we're going to burn some magnesium inside it. By containing the magnesium turnings in CO2, we're going to be lighting a well, we're going to be oxidizing the magnesium in essentially an oxygen-free atmosphere yep. because the magnesium is going to steal the oxygen from the carbon dioxide. There can be few people who haven't heard about CO2 and global warming. If you have the sun here and there is light coming out of the sun, <clears throat> mostly visible light or just light that is just <clears throat> into the infrared. It goes through the atmosphere, which is transparent, and is absorbed by the surface of the Earth, which gets hot. And because everything that is hot gives out heat, ray, heat or energy at some sort of wavelength, the heat comes out from the Earth, but at much longer wavelength of light than from the sun, because the Earth is much cooler than the sun. And it comes out at a wavelength that can just be absorbed by the CO2. So the CO2 in the atmosphere absorbs it and stops it getting out. It doesn't stop all of it getting out, but the more CO2 you have in the atmosphere, the more infrared that is absorbed and the higher the heat temperature on the atmosphere. So on the Earth, the temperature on the surface is quite a pleasant 15 degrees centigrade or whatever, the sort of temperature we like to live at. On the planet Venus, which is much close to the sun, which has a huge amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the temperature at the surface is several hundred degrees centigrade. So it's really hot and baking. And if that wasn't bad enough, there's sulfuric acid in the atmosphere as well, just to spice it up a bit. Yep. And now we've placed on the top of our crucible so that the CO2 is stopping the oxygen from the atmosphere getting in. So the magnesium is now nicking oxygen from the CO2, reducing it to carbon and using that oxygen to oxidise to magnesium oxide. There is no argument among scientists about the fact that CO2 does cause warming of the atmosphere. The argument at the moment is how much of the temperature rise that people have seen in recent years is due to carbon dioxide. But clearly, the more carbon dioxide you have in the atmosphere, the higher the temperature is going to be. And my personal opinion is that we are causing this carbon dioxide in the atmosphere by burning out fossil fuels which cannot be replaced. And if we use less fossil fuels, it has to be a good thing. And so if it turns out that it is a scare and that um, global warming is not as serious as most scientists believe, we won't have lost anything because we'll have much bigger reserves of fossil fuel than we would have otherwise. So we have nothing to lose and we have a lot to gain because if the scientists are right and there's a 90% chance that they are right, that there are disastrous consequences of going on as we are. I think, should we do it again and we can put some more spout into it? Yeah, what do you reckon, Neil? So we're going for take two, because we enjoyed the reaction so much. And um, we've invited Martin down to come and have a look, because he told me he's never seen this reaction before, so I'd like to see the look on his face. No, I've never seen this at all. Quite excited. Really good. Never seen that before. Uh, yeah, I'm very pleased.
But I want to know what's inside. Yeah. So we'll have to wait for it to cool. Yeah. <laughs> now, you can yeah. see the chemical reaction is still warm. Yeah. So it's cooling down. Yeah. But we can see that there's two real products or two new compounds inside. A white one on the top, which is magnesium oxide. And if we bury it in a little bit further or look underneath, we can see a very dark grey or black one. And this is elemental carbon. So you can have some good fun with CO2 as well, because if you take a small piece and then place the coin on the CO2, the CO2 takes the heat, it acts as a heat sink and takes the heat away from the coin, starts to evaporate, and you get a lot of gas generated, which has to escape. Now let's see what happens. So the CO2 goes directly from being a solid into a gas, and you can see it vaporizing in my hands. Now I've got to keep it moving because it's quite cold and if I leave it on my hands for too long it'll actually cause a, a frost burn. If you put those molecules in a sealed container like so, seal that end up, instead of them just sitting there they'll want to push out and push out against the sides of the container. So we'll put a few pellets of the dry ice in here and leave it there and stand back. And so because it's being heated up it's going from solid straight to a gas and that, those gas molecules are pushing up against the sides of the film canister. And the only weak point of the canister is the bottom, which is the lid. We're going to speed up that sublimation process by dropping a piece of this into some water, which is at somewhere near room temperature. So now you can see that the CO2 itself is evaporating to form CO2 gas, which is then collecting inside the beaker, and you can see that as this frothy white gas. Uh, but when something will happen, we don't know. The unpredictability of science. Uh, we'll just leave the other one to go now. It's getting life out of me. <laughs> yeah, it does that to the kids as well. Brilliant. I thought I'd taken the light out there. <laughs> Here you see a great demonstration of the density of CO2 much more dense than air, and you see as it comes out of the top of the beaker, it starts to fall. So you can see the force generated by just putting a few pellets of carbon dioxide in a tiny container like this. It sounded like a shot had rung out. That's what happens in a small container like this. Uh, in science, you know, we like to scale things up, so what we're going to do now is put the dry ice into a large container. Our workshop made us a cannon just for dry ice. So as you can see, we can actually put a lot more dry ice in there. I'm going to aim at the fume cupboard there. Um, it's probably the most resistant bit of kit we've got in here. So let's see how long this will take. Bullseye. Where'd you hit? Just there, I think it was. 